Hi, this is Ryan from Better Tattooing. Today we're going to be tearing apart an Axis, I think this is Valhalla. I don't know, let's see how well this thing is made compared to some of those knockoff machines we've been tearing apart. Alright. <laughs> Okay, now that's over with, Axis. I gotta tell you, out of all the machines that we've had so far, even compared to that Bishop, this thing feels like the most sturdy, best built thing I've, I've seen so far. It just looks like it's well engineered. Um, every aspect of it is nice and tidy. It feels tight. It's heavy as hell, um, which I don't know if that's gonna be a positive or negative, but all of it seems to just come from this grip. Just take the grip off, it's actually not that much, so. Um, figuring out some of the measurements, weight on this, the grip in and of itself, holy smokes, there's 88 grams, 0. 0.170 grams. And you know, I know somebody had said something about like, why don't you just do ounces? So it's, it's 3.110 ounces. It's a three ounce grip. That's crazy. Uh, machine wise here, tear it back out. We do the both on this. The machine, in saying that, is 3.465 ounces. So the, the machine and the grip on this are roughly the same weight, uh, combining it for six to seven ounces in total. Right, I gotta do the grams on this, don't I? Give me one second, I'll flip back over. Mm -hmm. There we go. Just could just do a factor unit equation, but I don't want to. And the machine is... 98.275 grams. Uh, it, it's really crazy how much that this front grip weighs, but I mean, perhaps that's that's a good thing. When we start looking at how these operate, um, the denser and heavier that the grips are, usually it can offset stuff. If you're gonna be using a, a cord to do this and you have a little bit of back pressure, that's gonna be keeping your wrist going. Having some extra counterbalance weight in the front will actually help you keep it up, right? Because you can pivot off the tip of that and make it so that your, your wrist actually doesn't get as tired. That's that's smart engineering. Same thing as if you have a battery on the back, like with that weird critical that we had torn apart and ended up heat wheel, welding back together. This, this ends up counterbalancing it, right? So your center of balance on these stays relatively true uh, on the center line, depending on whatever you have in the back, right? So you don't have to sit there and constantly feel like you're pulling against it, which is actually pretty nice. Um, disassembly on this, let's see what we can do here. It looks complex in comparison with some of the other ones I've gotten into, and I've never taken one of these apart. Um, getting one of these was a bit difficult as well, um, as I had to... I don't know, I had to, I'm going to have to give give blood basically to keep this thing uh they're expensive these machines um i was told you can find them on sale i'll put the price out here in just a moment but um looks like okay back cap coming off very short leads that's actually kind of neat however this has been put together and whoever buy it's very 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 tight tolerances normally we'll have a lot of extra slack on these wires here so you can have um, easier assembly, but whoever's assembled this, I mean, this is tidy as hell. Having less lines and less wires in here decreases the total capacitance and, and power that's needed to power something, right? Because you don't have to push as much power through something because it's not as, as long. That's fantastic. Um, front chuck here, or the um, slide selector on the adjustable cam, that's neat. So it looks like they have a slide pin that's rolling from the inside of there. I don't see how to pull this apart yet. It looks like there's a balance plate on the back here. That may actually end up coming off. I might have to grab, it looks like a watch tool that's gonna to come in here. So disassembly is gonna require removal of the solder in the back plate here, which is fine. I've got my solder iron here, it's gonna get warmed up. Let's plug that in and let's take out the front here and see what that looks like. Let's drop that there. I'm not catch anything on fire either. Good. Uh, this looks like an o ring right here. O ring, yeah. 
Oh, it's just the splash plate. Okay, so this should, uh, especially because this is blind taking it apart. A little bit of grease, looks like a simple, look at that. So there's a single push rod that's coming down quite straight through the center of that. That's actually really tidy. Small O-ring on the back there, greased up, very light contact coming through the inside there. I wonder when we take this apart how, one, what that thing is gonna be made out of, and two, that's so small so thin and so precise. I imagine that you're only going to be able to use certain types of uh, cartridges with this. Um, yeah, just to see what's going on. Anyways, pull the back side apart now. See if we can get this disassembled. Make sure that we label that. Because, oh, it's already labeled on the back. Sweet accustomed to working on machines that don't look like they're as well put together. <laughs> um, all right. That backs off. Let's see here. This one does look like it has a crimp edge that's sitting on it. So this looks like it's been depressed. A flare here. It's probably keeping it retained. Go ahead and test that. Yeah. Close that up. Hmm. No. Oh shit. Didn't notice that. There's a set pin here. It feels like this is kind of loose. Some O-rings here. Pull them off. Let's see what these coming off. A lot of O-rings. Ooh. It's actually pretty good having all of these on there because it ends up making it so you have less chance of blow by with some of your stuff. Um, okay, this is just straight up just the motor on the back here. That looks pretty decent size. There's some set screws we already see in the back there. Phillips on one side. There's probably one on the other. So this top bit is going to separate itself some other way because we have to have direct access to the inside. I'm thinking that it's that set pin. So I'm going to go drill that out and see what we got. All right, got it. Guess what? That's not a pin. It looks like it's actually just solder. Yeah, it's been tinned. Oh, thank goodness. So I hit it with a drill and it just like fucking blew apart. <laughs> Which is kind of funny. Um, but yeah, this is pretty simple there, hey? Let's see if we can get the rest of the stuff pulled apart. Let's see what is going on here. grab our channel locks here there we go so now that soldered bit right there was actually hell yeah that was what was holding it together uh, inside here we've got some foam a lot of foam actually Seems to be some uh, pads soaked in some oil. They're going to keep this, set this up in order here, uh, lubricated and insulated from vibrations when it's running. Like this is this is high quality stuff right here. I really like this. Um, a couple more pad sets. Uh, let's just pass these ones we got here. That one, that one, that, another one. Wow, look at all these guide that they got going on here. This is, this is great. So each one of these acts is based like an insulator to ensure that that push rod that we've got is gonna be moving forward. Normally the ones that have different colors like this are not only there to help 
keep it keep it lubricated and this stuff you know so they don't use white lithium grease this is like an actual spray grease this is like the stuff that i normally use when i uh, clean and maintain these machines for other people this is brilliant so far i am actually very impressed axis your machine looks like it's very well built um on the inside here we got our guide plate for where that cam is now we can actually see where those slots are aligning and moving forward and back and we'll go ahead and pull this apart now and see what is actually going on on the inside there I have a feeling it's not going to be as technical as I hope it would be because my brain is going like oh so far like this is this is fancy I enjoy the engineering on this I, it's and it's not even that this stuff should cost very much I mean the the actual cost of this machine we're looking at these you know uh our little fabric washers and stuff it's not it's not a, a budget breaker but the amount of uh interesting ways of approaching this is is far 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 different than most of the other machines i've seen uh, like if you compare this to the bishop that we took apart in a previous uh episode like this is light years ahead in its approach to uh how it actually works it's like sliding cam which is right here right with our uh, this is bit rough kind of busted up but still snag set on that set pin that's going to go back for there um still well well manufactured kind of precise pieces there we'll take off our slide which is interesting we've got a return spring so that's another thing that's going to end up keeping this push rod that we've got set and tension so i imagine one of these machines right off the hop is going to have far better chance of sticking with high speeds regardless of what um, cam setting that you're going to have on this um, weak points on this where our push rod is right here i think it's, it's high quality i'm thinking that the mount back here it looks like these two pieces were made out of the same thing and machined separately afterwards um because I mean, like literally, it looks like these two basically already fit together and they just notched out a side on it. Um, that seems to be the weakest part of this so far. So let's dig in a little bit further and see what's next. There is our motor um, off of these two check balls. That's always fun. Doink and doink. On the side. And let's see here our cam plate here is still it's on a, it's on one of those wobble plates right the same thing which is going to be giving it that motion movement to get it to uh lift and push that uh push rod for your thing this is this is actually pretty interesting i like how snug this is it's actually set on a pivot let's see if we can get this thing apart and then take a good look at it Okay. Looks like, yeah, this will just end up lifting right off here. There we go. That's our center part where our pivot is. Two bearings will sit on top of each other. We have one center mount that goes right here. Seems to be relatively loose. It ends up allowing it to slide up and down as it moves, which is actually really smart um, on the design here because it allows for a greater range of motion where the, we haven't seen in the other machines where these are assembled, where it allows for the adjustments to take up some of the slack. So when this is moving and it's spinning really fast, its natural tendency is for that thing to end up walking and moving along with it. Um, this is great so far. We'll go ahead and take this apart and see if we can figure out what's going on with the motor. And then after that, we can set this back up and start doing some tests on operation. There's some screws. All right, so we got everything apart after blowing out that bearing. It's not a big deal. I hate having to reset bearings. Anyways, um, no discernible marks on the motor. I mean, it does look pretty neat. I mean, it's assembly is simple. I bet you that this casing is actually hiding where the motor comes from. It feels it feels like it's not cheap but that also could just be me being a bit biased right now because i'm so impressed with how they built this machine um, but the majority of the weight for this um, entire build is going to be coming just from that machine where it's weighing in at uh, 47.5 roughly uh, grams which is 
a good a good chunk of what this is actually oops it went too far of what this entire machine is i mean it's it's a large percentage it is just over half the same uh the weight of the grip that we had seen so it's it's pretty good right and uh yeah it's, yeah it's i don't know so far i'm actually really impressed with this i mean the entire setup and making of this is uh, or the breakdown of this is 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 fancy you know all of the little parts in here serve a purpose there's nothing that is is wasted i mean space wise everything is so friggin tight and shoved together in this it is almost ludicrous uh, the machine sells for 639 uh with one of these bulbous grips uh direct from supplier and um while if we're going to be sticking through to the 2.5 times uh uh, manufacturing cost is what the actual sale cost is. I'm thinking that Axis is actually better value for the money. I mean, just the machining on this stuff alone, all of these little parts, um, there's no maintenance system. So these like, these uh, like sponge separators and pads that are soaked with oil are gonna make sure that this thing runs forever. I mean, it's it looks like it's just out of anything that we've taken apart so far, and I've taken apart dozens of machines, just, you know, starting to put the videos up one by one. This is, by far and above the the most sophisticated and best built machine that i've i've pulled apart i'm actually kind of surprised um it's the one machine so far that i've taken that this has some science behind it being a rotary machine it's not just a direct drive that's been modified to fit something there is actual thought in the application of this with all the different ceiling rings um that are going on this is probably the least likely to have infiltrates uh in it um this is actually uh one of my very, very good friends machine. I'm going to have to try to replace this bearing <laughs> because yeah, they're going to be a little bit uh, cantankerous if I can't get this thing working again. Anyways, um, the, just the amount of effort that went into this is astonishing to me. This is probably by far now my favorite machine breakdown that I've done. And I'm not being sponsored by, you know, and I haven't, I didn't get this machine from free from Axis, but this thing actually seems like it's worth the money to me. Um, we have some more machines that we're going to be pulling apart here in the next little bit and battery packs as well. But so far, um, I got to start giving this out of 10. Axis, this is like a 9 out of 10, guys. This is a fantastically made machine. Um, using it, especially like with the, the Maxim motor that they have with this, um, having like a stall speed that's so low, uh, it, it spins up to a certain speed and then it'll drop back down. Some people are kind of confused when that happens, but that's what they're designed to do, right? It'll cycle up, it's smart, and then it ends up slowing it back down to where it needs to be so that it can run efficiently. This, this is just a good machine. I am actually very, 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 very surprised. So nine out of 10, uh, Axis, good job. Keep it up. Don't start skimping on stuff. Um, I'm going to try to grab another couple of their machines and we'll do a breakdown again and see if the other models are just as good as this. Anyways, that's that. Um, I'm not going to show you the reassembly because I've got to rebuild this bearing and that's going to take me freaking forever. So uh, I'll just do that though. We'll, we'll do some other type of uh, testing on this. Like, I'm not going to be able to put this together and even do a speed test on this with how this is built up. Um, exposing the motor and um, putting a tack on it and, and doing some of the other stuff I've been doing with the other machines it not going to be possible. So I'm going to see if I can develop something that will actually allow me to test how these things are going to spin up and what under load it'd be really cool if we could do some sort of test with an actual cartridge that we put in here they'll test loaded and unloaded how fast these machines actually run and how they um end up you know yeah loaded or unloaded how how they how they run um when when you're actually using them uh last thing to note here these maxon motors which is like this is the most expensive part of this i did do a cursory search uh, to see how much a motor like this would cost on the max in sight. These are between uh, 75 to 250 dollars depending on the the specs for just the motor. And that's what I'm saying like the 2.5 times uh, uh, MSRP, right the resale or sale price on these things is it's not hitting with this. It looks like they're probably just you know maybe doubling, maybe one and a half times, whatever the assembly of this stuff is gonna be, past labor even, they're cutting it pretty close um, with these. 
bearings are made in America, motors, you know, German uh, or European, as far as I can tell with Max, and I think they are, they might be Japanese as well. The rest of the tooling, everything else, I mean, this is all high quality stuff. So if you are looking to spend, you know, under a thousand on a tattoo machine that I personally think is gonna last you, th this is a, a five to 10 year machine for sure. And for a rotary, that's saying something. Um, and I mean, if it is just a breakdown where you're gonna have to rebuild this and get a new motor, these motors, while they are expensive, the precision in mind this is this is a good machine so good job y'all let me know if you like this one uh, like subscribe buy a hat do all that stuff maybe get maybe get the the uh eight block rock star uh which is our we got a hoodie in the shop uh, just to show everyone that you're important to those around you and everyone else doesn't know you exist anyways that's it for today it's right for better tattooing and signing off Get a little back together. Good job, uh, Axis. This stuff is this stuff is pretty cool. Enjoyed the breakdown and the uh, reassembly, including having to rebuild that fucking <laughs> stupid fucking bearing. Anyways, all back together.